Hey, how's it going? Heretics. James here for Heretic Wargaming. So something that I've recently gotten into and I know a lot of people have been asking a lot about. And uh, as a matter of fact, I went online uh, to figure all this stuff out on YouTube and I realized that nobody has made a recently updated uh, version of these videos. And that is how to uh, cast mold your own bits. Now, it's something that I, uh, I, and I don't know about you guys out there, have been a little hesitant to do. Um, I was like, eh, it's going to be a lot of work, a lot of money, like, you can mess it up, it's not going to look great. But now, having done it, um, now, it is something that you need to practice with. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm really new at doing it, so my molds are not the best. But I can definitely see, uh, the more that you work with the stuff and the better you get, uh, you can make some really, really good molds. So, um... Now the reason why I'm filming this for you guys is us as Chaos players and one of my common complaints is that our kits do not come with everything that you need, right? For example, you buy a Chaos Terminator's kit, you do not get enough chain axes to actually build your unit. So, you can make your own. We don't have to go to third uh, party bit sites, you don't have to go to Shapeways, uh, you know, if your buddy's got a 3D printer, good on you. But most of us do not, so this is a way to save a lot of money and I'm going to show you guys why I am doing this. Okay, so your requirements uh, for what you need to actually make these molds is this stuff right here is called Oya Maru. That is spelled O-Y-A-M-A-R-U. Now, you can look it up. It's also called Blue Stuff. Um, I got this stuff on Amazon. It is a lot cheaper than Blue Stuff, so uh, just something to keep in mind. Another name for it is Thermal Plastic, if you guys want to order it that way. Now, it's going to come in long uh rectangles like this it smell it's really sweet smelling do not eat it don't let your kids smell it because they might eat it uh because it's in this cute package and it does look kind of like candy so definitely warn you and uh the blue stuff right here is uh oil maro that i've already used so that's what it's going to look like when it's in there now i'm going to show you guys uh you're going to want to chop it up into smaller pieces in the next part of the video and the other thing you need is whatever you're going to actually uh use to cast your molds now i actually like to use green stuff to make my molds and some examples here are like these little tyranid arms right and so um you can use this one thing to keep in mind is depending on how you mix it it can end up being soft you can use cast resin milliput uh there is a lot of different things out there that you guys can look up and um everything that i've researched it does not stick to your blue stuff so as long as it's not corrosive and it won't eat it away uh definitely you can use it to do your blue stuff now in this video uh so i, I actually bought a tyranid lot where i got a bunch of these little gaunts right and they were actually missing their bits um their legs and their arms and their heads right and so i have to cast mold a bunch of these guys and i'm going to show you you need whatever bits you need so for example here I, i've been cast molding some arms weapons all the stuff that i need for the these uh various tyranids right and that here's a couple examples of a finished product so we're going to go downstairs i'm going to show you guys actually how to go ahead and make a mold all right so we're down in the kitchen ready to make our molds so you want a electric kettle uh, if you guys have one and you're going to want to set it to the boil i've got a cuisinart here that my roommate has um so you're always going to boil your water now you can use just a normal pot on a stove uh if that's what you have either way it will work you're going to want some sort of glass now um an insulated mug or something is probably better than an actual normal glass because a normal glass is actually going to lose its uh heat retention very very quickly which means you have to work with the um, thermal plastic really really quickly and then you're also going to want some sort of flat surface now it can be your uh, plastic cutting mat for your models uh, here i actually just use this plate um, wash it off really really good when you're done right this is basically my modeling plate for uh, for a little while and so what we're going to do is we're going to get this to the boil pour it in there and I'll show you guys how to actually uh oh yeah you also want like a paintbrush or a pen or something so um while this is boiling let me go ahead and explain a few things because it doesn't take long for it to boil now these are some old molds that uh I've made in here and the beauty of this stuff is you can use it time and time and time again now it does break down after time now uh let me see if I can actually zoom in on this there we go so you guys can see right here, this was a Tyranid head mold. And uh, I'm gonna kind of show you guys. So after so many uses, they actually start breaking down. You guys can see that there's like a crack right there. 
And so they will start breaking down and you're gonna have to remake your molds. So that's actually why I'm not molding any more Tyranid head right now, um, because I basically need to recast this mold. And as a matter of fact, that's probably the, uh, the piece out of here that I'm gonna do. Now, you can hear the kettle. It's almost there. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and come back when the kettle's done and I'll show you guys the next part of this process. All right, so my kettle has stopped, it's beeped at me. Now, one of the things you want to do uh, when you do your Oyamaro, and before you guys uh, make your mold out of it, is you want to cut it up into little smaller pieces. Now you can use, uh, a knife does not work really well, like a, a good pair of scissors uh, works really, really well. Um, here in this example, I'm just gonna go ahead and reuse uh, some of these bits from my old mold and one of this uh, right there. Now you want to go ahead, I have to do all this by one, with one hand. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, pour our steam and water in our thing. Do, 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 do. Don't over pour it, obviously. Now this stuff gets moldy really, really quick, and you want to do this very quickly. This is also another reason why you want a utensil, so you can use like a um, like a butter knife or something like that, because this stuff will get really, really squishy. Um, it takes about two to three minutes ish. Uh, I actually have messed with this stuff pretty quickly and you guys can see how it just kind of gets really flexible. And so I am going to be doing this stuff with one hand, um, just to kind of show you guys. Now basically once it's to this point, right, it's, it's a lot of people like do it for like two to three minutes. Um, and I think the reason why they do that is that way it's really, really warm and you get a little bit longer time to actually mess with it. Uh, so, but what we'll, what we'll do is I'm going to take it out real quick. Do not reach into the water like a dummy. I have to do this with one hand so it's a little harder. So you guys can see, ow, <laughs> see, uh, it's really, really squishy, just like putty, right? Now you have to make a two-part mold for whatever you're going to actually do so what we're going to do and you guys can see it's really really stretchy we're going to go ahead and break off part now this is just an example just to show you guys how to make a mold um, i'm not actually going to use this mold for anything this is just a how to so you're going to go ahead and lay out whatever your piece is right and you're going to take your bit so let's just say i want to do this uh this flesh bore gun so what you're going to do is you're going to push it into the mold. Now the thicker the mold, the longer it will actually last. So uh, like this mold right here is actually pretty thick. So I, I've used this one like 10, 15 times. And then um, what you're going to do is you're going to kind of mold around the bit. Now it's a two part mold. So do not over mold it like basically like overlap on top of the bit, right? So just more or less like that. And you guys can see it's already getting kind of solid. So we got to be quick. And then that's where your uh, your paintbrush is going to come in. So you're going to go ahead, and you got to be quick about this, right? You're going to go ahead and make three little dots. And what that's going to do is that's what's going to line up my mold, just like in this one, right? So we made our three little dots. Now you're going to go ahead and let that sit for about three to five minutes. Uh, I will come back, and we're going to go ahead and do... Now, you always want to like have more water on standby because this is actually going to get cold to the point I can't use it to actually put on top um, because I got to let this sit for like two to three minutes and the reason why you do this is that way this part doesn't melt into the bottom part of your mold and then you don't actually have a mold right you just have a big ball with a bit in the middle and now you got to dig it out so um, we'll be back all right so my timer's gone off and in the uh, intermission I went ahead and I'm going to go ahead and recast these uh, two tier net heads because I needed to redo the mold for those um, that way I can make more. Now one thing to keep in mind depending on the piece that you're actually molding depends on the orientation you want to put it in. So originally I did the tier net heads down and what happened is you're going to actually get some spillover like example in this mold right and so what it did was it put the mold lines right in the middle of the face here which was terrible uh when i chopped them off and it actually ruined some of the details uh for the mold so something to keep in mind when you guys are doing that now uh went ahead and uh softened up some more oyamaru right and so uh gonna go ahead and split off a good chunk now like i said you want to make your molds kind of 
thick uh, depending on how often you use it. So if you're going to reuse a mold over and over and over again, make it really, really thick. Um, that way you can you don't have to redo the mold, right? I didn't make this mold nearly as thick the first time, so this time around I made it really thick. Now you're going to go ahead and take your second piece of Oyamaru, or blue stuff. And what we're going to do is, with the palm of your hand, you're just going to kind of shove it down on top of your bit. And you want to make sure it's nice and good on there. And so what you're going to do is you're going to let this sit here and cure like this for like another two to three minutes. Okay, so we're back up in the craft room. As you guys can see, I've already uh, pried my molds apart. Now, most of you guys will probably be using green stuff to actually make your molds. Now, it is something that you can do. One thing that I really, really, really want to advise you guys on is your mixture of green stuff actually matters quite a bit. Now, the more yellow you mix in, the softer the material is going to be when it finishes. Whereas the more blue you mix in, the harder the material is going to be. Now that actually matters quite a bit, so I'm going to actually grab my uh, finished uh, Hormigant here. Or uh, Terma... Terma? Yeah, Termagant. <laughs> and you guys can see uh, both the pieces of green stuff on him are actually different colors. Uh, his head's a lot lighter than his legs. That's because the head I actually mixed more yellow in. And same thing with these bits right here, uh, there's more yellow in those. Whereas the legs I mixed more green, uh, blue in. Now, as the finished uh, component, you guys can see, so like the mold line there in the middle, uh, uh, bottom of his leg, is pretty terrible. Um, one thing that I've realized is to actually use a uh, X-Acto knife to actually chop around the bit. So you guys can see this one's uh, one that I just recently molded. And then this one right here I chopped around because what it does is it's going to actually uh, decrease the prevalence of that mold line. Now, because it's on the inside of the gaunt, I'm not too worried because once it's painted up, like you guys aren't really going to gonna see that right so i'm not too worried about it but for some bits like uh, i did some flesh borers it ended up being so bad i actually had to just throw away the bit bit now these two are actually still curing and i'm gonna actually mix some up and show you guys the mold and and show you step by step but it's something that i wanted to highlight so this one uh i always trim around it uh after it's cured for about a half an hour that way um the mold line is going to be a lot less prevalent right and so this one i've actually trimmed around and it's it's for the most part dry and so this is where the mixture is really really important because you guys will notice that it's really super flexible right it's going to take a long time for this to actually get hard and you guys notice you know the mold line there is pretty bad but this is the side you guys are going to see, which uh, so you guys aren't going to see it too much. I'm not too anal about this stuff, but I'm actually going to have to take an exacto and go around it, right? And so um, you guys notice it's really, really flexible. As a matter of fact, I can actually bend this claw and leave it in whatever position I want. So you need to make sure your uh, your green stuff mixture is how you want it. I do recommend adding more blue. You guys will notice uh, these are actually a lot darker. These little arms that I made here, and they're basically as hard as a rock once they dry. So um, as a matter of fact, the legs on this guy, I, I did that way and, and they actually turn out a lot better. You just need to make sure you trim them uh, pretty quickly. Otherwise it's gonna dry so much that um, it's gonna become more brittle and it's gonna be really, really hard to actually trim up uh, the these lines, all right? So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix together some green stuff and I'm gonna show you guys how to put together these molds. And Okay, so we're back. Um, so here I've used the two leg ones that I had previously molded because I know that they're going to work really well. Um, went ahead and filled them with green stuff. You're going to notice I have not filled these with green stuff. The reason being, one of the things, and, and I guess you guys could call this more of a tips and tricks uh, video, is that I've realized uh, I was throwing out a lot of green stuff because I was basically making way too much. Now, the way that we're going to conserve some of this, so I've got petroleum jelly here, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to take a bit of petroleum jelly on your finger and you're going to rub it over the top of here. Now the mold does not actually stick uh, after it dries to your green stuff. However, while it's molding, it actually will stick to the the blue stuff. And what that ends up doing is that um, you actually have to let it dry before you can trim a little bit off. And this is just a way that I've learned to basically conserve um some green stuff. Now you're going to notice we got the little nodules. Uh, so never make your nodules the same between your molds. I, I mean, I guess that's uh, something that you didn't really need to know, but something uh, a, definitely a tip. What you're going to do is you're going to line up your two little nodules here. 
So once again, this is kind of hard doing it uh, with one hand. So once you have your nodules lined up, right, you're gonna go ahead and push it down with the palm of your hand. So be really firm. And this is why uh, you'll actually get um, molds that will burst, kind of like my head molds did before, because um, I actually put a lot of force down on these because I want it to fill every little nook and cranny of the mold. Now you might be asking yourself at this point, well, why'd you put the Vaseline? And I think I pretty much explained that, but. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna push those down, right? And now you guys will notice it actually filled in the mold. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off. So the Vaseline allows it so the blue stuff or green stuff will not stick to our mold. And this is all that leftover green stuff. So that's why I was wasting a lot of green stuff because I was making way too much to fill all my molds. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is now, I'm gonna take this X-Acto knife, right? Yet again, you can use the petroleum jelly. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to trim around the outside of this. Now, um, this is where I'm going to move to my uh, my actual you know uh, light ring camera to kind of just show you guys how I do this. And this is a way to basically conserve some of this green stuff, and we can add it back to our ball here. Um, now you got to do this really quickly because we're going to add that to these other molds. So I'm going to move to the other camera. Uh, this next part will be a little long, just so you guys know, and I will be right back. For so what we're going to do is we're just basically going to trim around this. Now, you don't want to trim way too close to the mold, right? You want to leave a little bit of a buffer because what's going to end up happening, i got to be careful around this leg. And you don't also don't want to cut into your mold. So be very, very careful when you guys are doing this. You guys can see I'm just kind of scraping it away from the, the model here or from the mold. because what's gonna end up happening, right? So displacement is going to still happen. Um, so if I do still have a little bit of spare green stuff in there, it's gonna fill in any of the gaps. So you will have to trim these again, no doubt. And this is where you guys can see that it does still stick to the mold some. So it doesn't permanently stick. You guys can see I can just kind of scrape it off and it, it moves away. We're just gonna add that to my green stuff ball off to the side. And so you guys can see I've trimmed it up. There is still a little extra, but I've gotten most of it off of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and line back up my... Um... Sorry if you guys can't see that. I'm going to line back up my mold here. And we're going to go ahead and re-squish it down. So what that's going to do is that displacement, any parts where I over-trimmed it, right? It's just going to refill it in and we're good to go. So this mold is good to go. You guys can set it off to the side, let it cure for uh, several hours, right? Now you guys are gonna notice, right? So this one right here, because I did the Vaseline and I didn't, and I'm doing this pretty quick, uh, it kind of sat, so it actually tore the mold a little bit. Now, um, I'm gonna try to pull some of this green stuff off of the, the lid. That's why you use a crafting desk, right? See, I never edit these things out because it's stuff that, <laughs> these are real life things that you guys uh, learn from videos like this. So um, you guys notice it really messed this up, but, uh, and it pulled away from it, but I can still kind of see the outline, which the whole purpose of this is to basically just trim off excess. That's the whole purpose of this step. I'm not actually trying to clean up the mold. That's, that's what trimming after uh, does for your, your mold, right? And so you gotta make sure you don't, yeah, like this mold might not turn out really well. We'll see, we'll see. Bit. And you guys can see this thing is, is kind of messed up, right? Looks really messed up. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, more Vaseline to the, the lid here. Because the part that it actually stuck to is the part that I didn't put Vaseline on. Uh, so I'm gonna just add a lot of Vaseline to the lid here. I'm going to go ahead and put the mold back on. Squeeze it down real quick. And I'll show you guys how it just kind of corrects itself, right? And voila! So my mold is back to normal, right? So even though it kind of messed it up a little bit, and like I said, I'm still going to have to trim a little bit, but not nearly as much when I'm done, which is awesome. And same thing, go ahead and put that off to the side. Now you guys are going to notice my green stuff ball actually got a hell of a lot bigger. Before it might have maybe made one of these heads. Well at this point, now I can go ahead and squish them. 
Now I know I started this video showing you guys how to make the flesh bore gun, right? Uh, the reason why I'm not molding that is so if you guys are molding a lot of parts. Uh, one thing that I kind of another mistake I made when I started doing this is I tried to mold all the parts of one gun all at once, and it feels like you're not making a lot of progress, right? Um, as a matter of fact, I can't show you guys, but I actually have 28 gaunts that I have to do this for. So it's actually better a as a way to actually, you know, <laughs> uh, feel like you're making progress to do a few things at a time. So you guys can notice that it's nice and shiny because I have a lot of Vaseline on there. And if you guys want to, you can put Vaseline on them and it makes it so that you can pull it out of the mold a lot faster. But it's up to you. So we're going to go ahead and line up the, the little holes in there, right? And the other hole. And yet again smoosh it down and I might actually get enough to make the flush bore gun we'll, we'll see and voila you guys can see that I actually have heads in there now um, and at which case I can go ahead we're gonna go ahead and scrape out whatever extra kind of came out of here too and so my hope is that um, when these actually mold that all this little bits of green stuff come out of here if not what I'll have to do is actually clean up the, uh, the blue stuff which is Kind of crappy but it is what it is right so um part of making mistakes is this is where you guys learn and this is where i learn so uh now i know to add the vaseline all over the blue stuff not just to the part that i'm actually going to mold right what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and trim around the heads here yet again so this guy is actually supposed to have an open mouth so i'm going to try to trim a little bit out of the mouth here so one thing I have realized is that things like open mouths are really hard to, uh, like this, this gaunt has a mouth that is completely open. Um, and so when I molded it up and down, it filled in the, the mouth. And so I figured, you know, if I did it sideways, it wouldn't actually fill it in. It still filled it in. So, um, that's definitely something I would keep in mind. So what I'm saying is that this mouth right here, right, you guys can see how it's open in my mold right here it's actually uh, more or less closed so um which is fine i mean the other ones don't have uh the opening it, it just looks like a, a bit of whatever filling their mouths so i'm just gonna leave them as is and so what we're gonna do yet again is just kind of clean this up now this mold uh kind of I kind of left a gap at a weird area like right here on this mold so hopefully it um, doesn't ruin how the heads turn out now if you guys mess up the molds that's another uh, great quality of blue stuff uh, is that you can just reuse them and scrap them um, basically like this mold didn't work I'm gonna go ahead and just make another one right And I do recommend, uh, so this is actually a broken tip on this X-Acto knife. Don't use a super sharp one, right? Because you might actually, like, don't dig down in there. I'm being very, very, very light on this. So that's what we're going to do. Yet again, put some Vaseline on there. And then this is actually going to um, be my completed mold. I'll leave that off to the side. Fill this like that, and then squish this down. Getting the Vaseline trick again. This is just something I personally like to do, but that's because I like to actually pull stuff apart over and over and over again. Um, I'm really impatient. So push that down, and we'll see if we got a gun. Oh, damn, we did. We had just enough to actually... Uh, so, like, his elbow is a little uh, gapped. But this one right here, I'm going to actually uh, let cure like this because I don't need the extra green stuff. And it's actually pretty thin, so uh, that's going to let it cure. And so you guys can see with just a little ball, I was able to make uh, four different molds, and those are going to cure. Now I'm going to just go ahead and uh, reiterate. So this is uh, the gaunt leg, so these right here are actually still curing. And so you guys will see um, that some of the detail is lost, especially, come on, camera. Oh, guess. Okay. Focus. Okay. So you guys will notice uh, some of the detail is lost, especially down in here. Let's see if it'll refocus. I know it's not focusing very well. But camera. Um, 
So you guys will notice uh, some of the uh, detail down in here is lost. And so um, this is where you would actually take your X-Acto knife. So any of the uh, mold lines right here. Now this is still a little too soft for me. So you guys can notice um, it's, it's more or less like bending. It's not really like uh, carving off. But you guys would actually go through, carve it off. And then, um, where's one of my gaunts? Yeah, I got the right side. And then what you would do is you would actually take your piece and you would actually go ahead, fit it in. So, and then you would glue it down. Now, it's not trimmed, so obviously it doesn't fit flush. But what that does is it will go ahead and give you your finished product, which this gaunt is actually finished. And uh, like I said, I'm not too, too picky on the inside here. Some people might be, but once I actually have it primed up and painted, I don't think a lot of people actually notice um, that this guy right here is more or less uh, the same as a normal gaunt. So let's go ahead and go to the outro. So I hope you guys out there in YouTube land found, uh, learned a lot from this video. Uh, as a matter of fact, I learned a few things myself as I was doing my molds um, and showing you guys a lot of tricks and things, do's and don'ts. And uh, using green stuff to actually mold bits is very, very awesome. Um, like I said, this is something I wish I had known earlier, and it's something that you can use for the rest of your hobby and career. Um, and as I advance, I will probably end up getting into resin and so on and so forth. Uh, one thing to note, uh, and I, I cannot stress this enough. If your molds start messing up, if they crack, if they are not good, don't be lazy, right? Just go redo it. You guys saw how quickly I was able to make molds. Uh, in less than 10 minutes, I had the molds done. So, um, you know, uh, scrap those pieces. You know, yes, it sucks. I, I don't like throwing away like green stuff that I've already used. Um, I try to use as much as possible, right? And that's why I started saving green stuff by trimming around the models and using it to make another mold. Um, the more that you can maximize your use of the green stuff, the more value you're going to get out of it, right? Uh, and all of the materials, because uh, you should have a paintbrush if you're doing this hobby stuff, you should have an X-Acto knife, right? Um, all the materials all in 20 bucks. And you guys are good to go. You guys can make tons and tons of uh, uh, bits, right? This roll of three foot uh, green stuff, you know, I only used, you guys can see, uh, to make all those bits, I just used a little nip right there. This was a brand new roll when we started this video. So um, you guys will be able to make tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, check us out on Patreon, Discord, Facebook. And until the next video, I'll see you guys later here on Heretic Wargaming.